Hey, it's Dave here. In this video, we're diving into Frigate's facial recognition feature, which is a follow-up to my previous one on number plate recognition. I'm not going to cover the installation or camera setup this time. We assume you've already got Frigate up and running with a live feed. Instead, I'll show you how to enable facial recognition, where to upload faces for training, and create a fun automation that triggers when specific people are detected. Now, just a quick heads up, some of the topics I touch do slightly overlap with what I covered in my number plate recognition video, so I've tried not to repeat anything you've seen already there. If you do need help with enabling RTSP, on your rear link camera or equivalent, or testing the video stream works in VLC player, I've linked both the earlier sections from a number plate recognition video and a written article that walks you through those steps in detail in the description section. Before we get started, just make sure you're running Frigate version 0.1 or later, since that's the first release with built-in facial recognition support you can check the version in the Frigate's UI under Settings, System Metrics, or if you're running via the add-on, you can check the version there too. So, let's open up Frigate and start by enabling facial recognition. So if we go into Frigate, and you can see I've got two camera feeds. The one on the right is my fake hallway pre-recording. I recorded this using a Reolink camera, just so the quality will be the same as in real life. Now, if you go to settings, then click on settings again, then select the enrichments tab. And if you scroll down, and we're going to want to turn on facial recognition and it also gives you the option in terms of model so you've got small or large i'm going to leave that as small and quickly head over to the official documentation where it gives you a bit more information so small is using more of the cpu i'm using a small form factor pc so i'm going to leave it as that and the large is for GPU-based hardware. Now, in terms of the hardware spec, it does have a link here, which I'm just going to take you to. However, it's a little bit vague in terms of what it considers suitable for GPU use. One thing to note for, as I scroll down a little bit further, it does mention about the Google Coral TPUs. They are only useful for object detection, and unfortunately, they won't help in terms of facial recognition. Something which is a bit of a shame because I've got one of these USB devices and it's not really going to help that much. Back into Home Assistant. So I'm just going to scroll down. And just before I click Save, if you just keep your eyes out around this area, you're going to see another button appear called Faces Library. So as I select Save, you can now see Face Library has appeared. Now, this is something that caught me out because when I was reading the documentation, I thought Face Libraries was going to be amongst the top here, and I was spending about an hour trying to understand why it wasn't there, and it actually turned out it was on the sidebar. That's probably saved you a few hours because it did for me. And you're going to get a notification about restarting. So I'm just going to go into settings and restart Frigate for changes to apply. Once Frigate has restarted, we're then going to upload some faces from Face Library. Initially, it's going to be completely blank and it won't show anything. But once you've added the first face, then every time it starts detecting faces, it's going to bring like a series of mugshots where you can then assign them to a particular name. So if you start off, we're going to do add face. And I'm just going to call this Dave. Then I'm going to click next. Now in this example, I'm just going to upload the one photo of myself. 
And then I'm going to wait for it to build a mug shot and start using those ones to build up the training. I think this is a better way forward because it makes more sense that the photos should come from the actual camera that's doing the facial recognition instead of just taking 30 selfies from your face and then expecting it to work. So I'm just selecting this face and to make you aware, you don't need to crop them. If you've got a body shot, that's fine. It will automatically crop it for you. Now I'm going to select next, then done. And you should see here, you've now got one face, which is the one I've just added. And you can see it's already cropped it. And then train, what's going to happen is it's going to build a selection of photos which are unknown or not quite recognized enough where you can then assign it to a person or create a new person later. Now that facial recognition has been enabled and I've uploaded a sample face of myself, I'm going to head over to the live feed and see what happens when a video of myself walks through the camera. Now obviously this is going to be very unreliable because it's only got the one source, but this is the part where we can start using mugshots. Now I'm just going to turn on a fake feed of myself walking and we'll see, does it detect me? So it's detected a person, oh and it already has seen someone. And it can see Dave. That's quite impressive for the one photo, but how reliable is that? Probably not. But this is the part where you can use the mug shots it generates. So now if we go back into Face Library, you can see now it's got a collection of photos and you can also see some of them like this one, it knows it's 93% me. So that's really good. Where others, it's got 61% me and it's showing unknown. The reason it shows unknown is because it defaults to recognition as 90%, otherwise it won't identify as me. So what I can do now is click on that and I can either create a new face and assign it to a different person or I can just select Dave. So I'm just gonna zoom out and I'm just gonna use all of these as examples. And over a period of time, my accuracy is going to get better and better because I'm going to build up more and more photos. And this is where personally, I think it's better to build up that catalog of photos from the mug shots you see in Frigate itself, opposed to just taking a load of random selfies. And I do look quite dodgy in some of these photos. I could almost imagine being on the FBI's wanted list, maybe for making terrible YouTube videos. So I'm just going to add a lot of these, finish them off. I'll leave that one, that 5%, 46, that one looks fine. And then every time I do another video feed, I'm gonna get more and more photos that I can play with, which is only going to increase the accuracy of facial recognition for myself. Now, something else to mention, because ChatGPT lied to me about this, these mugshots will only appear once at least one photo has been uploaded. What I was originally under the impression is if I could just enable facial recognition, walk past the camera multiple times, then see the mugshot and start selecting ones which are me. You can't do that until at least one face has been uploaded. I just thought I'd mention that because that's something that caught me out. I'm going to head back over to the documentation page and just cover detection and recognition settings. Now, just to make this clear, because it's something that caught me out before, detection threshold is I've seen a face and recognition threshold is I know this face is so-and-so's face. So it could be I've detected a face and then it's, oh, I've recognized that face, it's Dave. So just to make that clear, because that wasn't immediately obvious when I was reading the description. Now, for min area, what that means is if you're using a lower resolution, the lower the value you set it to, the more sensitive it will be to detection, but it may come at a cost of potentially having false positives. It's going to default to 500. Leave it as that and see how that works. Now, in terms of recognition settings, I set the model to small because I'm just using a small form factor PC. Now, these two settings, unknown score and recognition threshold, 
Even when reading the description, it still didn't make much sense. So I'm going to do my best to explain the differences between these two. Now, just to make this a little bit easier, let's just say we've set the unknown score to 0.2 and we've set the recognition to 0.9. If it sees your face and it's only 80% certain, then it will still say your name, but it's going to be in orange. And if we had set the unknown score to like 0.2, it won't show you as unknown. It's only when the recognition threshold is below what you've set it to, and it's within the value of the unknown score. If I go back into the mugshot part, so what I've done is I've set the unknown score to 0.2. So you can see here, it shows Dave, but it's got 70% because it hasn't truly recognized me because it needs to be 90%. If you look at that one, it's got 99. So that shows Dave and that's green, where these ones will show Dave, but it's orange. But if that goes below the unknown score, then instead of saying Dave, it will actually show unknown. Hopefully that makes sense because I don't think the documentation was clear enough at explaining those details. Back into the documentation again, minimum faces means that when it looks through the sample photos that is already identified as you, it only needs to see one of them and go, yep, there's one attempt that's been made. We know that's you and it's going to work. That defaults to one. You can bump it up higher, but you're then going to essentially decrease the sensitivity. Now this is the part where the mugshots are saved and I'm just going to open up another folder. From the server that's hosting Frigate, under your media folder, you should see a Frigate folder and then under clips, then you've got faces and you've got train. This is where all the attempts are going to be saved and this folder will be no higher than 100 photos. As soon as it gets higher than 100, it's just going to start overwriting. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to have a huge catalog of photos and it's going to eventually start using up your storage. This will default to only saving 100 photos, which is probably fine. You can leave it as that. But if you do want to change it, you might want to set it to something a little bit higher. So that is save attempts. Blur contents filter just puts into consideration that the image might not be that sharp and it defaults to true unless you set it to none. I'm just going to go back into the YAML and just show you these values being set. So we're going to go into Settings, Configuration, Editor. Now initially, all you're going to have is facial recognition enabled and the model size which is what I set from the GUI earlier. I'm just going to change that and I'm just going to add some spaces so it's a bit more readable. So that's all those settings I was talking about earlier. All of them are actually the default value, so there's not really much point me actually adding these. But if you then want to start tinkering and changing it, so that's the unknown score, you might want to maybe, instead of having that 0.8, you might want that a little bit lower just to be clear as well, the unknown score must be a value lower than the recognized threshold. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. So whatever you set the recognized threshold limit, unknown score needs to be a lower value. Minimum faces, I'm just going to leave to one. Save attempts is where those mugshots are going to be saved. And as soon as it hits 100, it's going to start overwriting the older photos. So you may want to play around with some of these settings. And you're just going to need to save and restart for changes to take effect, which I'm going to do now. Now, when you enable facial recognition in Frigate, there's an entity it will automatically create called Last Recognized Face. This is really helpful because you can use it for routines. If you go to Settings, then go to Devices and Services, do a search for Frigate, and I'm just going to select Fake Hallway, which is a camera I've been working on. And you should see here you've got Last Recognized Face. Now sometimes this doesn't always automatically appear, and if that is missing, 
if you just go back one step, click on these three dots and just select reload and then go back into there. Now what I like about this is if you click on last recognized face and then click on settings, it's got an entity ID which you can then use for triggering automations because I could have an automation where if the last recognized face changes to a certain person, I can then trigger an alert notification on my phone or get my Amazon Echo to broadcast a notification. And that's what we're about to do. So if you go to settings, go to automations and scenes, then select create automation, select create new automation, and if you click on these three dots and select edit in YAML, now I'm just going to paste in this example code. And what it's going to do is when the cupboard door goes from closed to open, and it's going to check the last recognized face and it's going to see if it's Gorilla Man. I have this problem where for some reason someone enters my flat every now and again wears exactly the same clothes as me and then is wandering around. So I'm trying to catch him and see what he's up to. So it's going to notify my mobile. I've selected notify.notify because that way all the phones with Home Assistant Companion app will receive that notification instead of a Pacific phone. It's going to send me this message on the screen and I'm also going to use my Amazon Echo and it's going to send another message. Now there is one problem with this automation, is what happens if the door gets opened before Frigate identifies or changes the state of the last recognized face to Gorilla Man. So I've added an extra condition if I just go down a little bit further, where what it's going to do is essentially check if that value does not equal Gorilla Man, and then it's going to wait an extra five seconds and essentially run the automation again. It's then going to check, is that last known face, that person? And if it is, it's then going to run the same actions again, where it's going to send a notification on my phone, and it's also going to send a notification to my Amazon Echo. So I'm just going to save that, then click rename, and we've now got that routine set up. Now, something like this might be useful if maybe you've got a private office and if a certain person is detected in there, you might classify them as an intruder and you might want to broadcast a notification or warning yourself. But I thought I'd just have a bit of fun with this automation. Back into Frigate, I'm now going to demo this automation working. We've got the camera feed here on the right. I'm currently hiding in my bedroom because I'm terrified in case this intruder comes out. And I'm just going to see, am I able to catch him today in this camera feed? Oh, someone's appeared. What is he doing? Oh no, he's opening the cupboard door. And what has he found? He's got my bananas. Dave. That weird guy who wears your clothes and puts on a gorilla mask just entered your flat and opened the cupboard. I think he's found your secret stash of bananas. Wow, this guy's got a nerve. Walks in there and steals my bananas. And that's it. You've now got frigate recognizing faces and triggering automations when people show up. Or in my case, that meant getting alert when someone decided to raid the cupboard. If you found this video helpful or it gave you a laugh, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more smart home automation tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.